Let's fast forward to the very end of your relationship with a narcissist. You're done with this person. Uh, you're on to them. And as far as you're concerned, they're totally out of your life, maybe as if they never even existed. All right. Now, how is the narcissist going to react to this? Because they do react. Keep in mind that narcissists are, by their very nature, reactive because everything is about inflating their ego. And their ego is, uh, it, it was just sensitive. I mean, the slightest little slight will trigger them into disproportionate, um, disproportionate reactions. I was going to say disproportionate outrage, but sometimes it's not necessarily outrage. It could be some, some other responses. All right, so you're out of this person's life. Now, how are they going to respond? What are they going to do when they realize that you have moved on? You don't need these people anymore. And they know that you know that they don't need you anymore. Now, keep in mind also what it was that attracted the narcissist to you in the very first place. Why is it that uh, this, uh, this parasite, the narcissist, selected you to be their host? They wanted to latch on to you, I mean, of all the people. And of course, yeah, they do latch on to others, but uh, they could have latched on to somebody else. Well, the answer to that question is, I think in most cases, at least this has been my experience, is they, there's a certain level of envy. That is to say, you're living a life that they want to live, or there's something about you that they wish they had. There is a deficit, a character deficit. There is a self-esteem deficit, and uh, they don't see that in you. So if they become a parasite, latch onto your life, make you miserable, then somehow in their twisted thinking, they will feel better. They will be happier because they will dominate the person who they view is dominating them. Now that's really weird thinking, right? That somebody would see you as being the dominant person in their life simply because from their perspective, you seem to be doing a lot better. You seem to be happier. You've got your life together. You're probably doing better financially. Your family life is much better. You're probably even driving a nicer car. Or if not, you're driving a car that's paid for. They may have a nicer car, but man, they go deep in debt to get that thing. Trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. So we understand that. Then. We understand why it is they chose you. And we also understand that they know that they are done with you. And we understand the basic fundamentals of how a narcissist works, and that is he is driven by the effort. She is driven, whichever, is driven by that effort to constantly be feeding their ego, inflating their ego. All right, now, that being done, based upon my experiences and my autodidactic studying and what I've learned about this thing, but primarily from my experiences, what is it that the narcissist will do after you understand that you're done with these people? And they get it too. You know, they know that you are done with them. But the narcissist, it seems, is never done. Well, I've noticed that there are seven different reactions. And your narcissist, if you are over the relationship, you may have observed these same things. But if you're not to that point yet, you probably will observe at least one of these. And, uh, you know, no two narcissists are going to react alike. But typically, you will find... At least one of these seven characteristics, probably multiple characteristics that we're going to mention overlaid. So listen to these um, listen to these seven things and see if you can identify with any of them. Chances are you'll identify with several. Well, number one, this one is almost inevitable, and that is they will unload a massive smear campaign. I say it's almost inevitable. No, it doesn't happen every single time. Uh, I can recall engaging with nar narcissists in the past where they didn't unload a smear campaign. At least if they did, I was totally unaware of it. Uh, it kind of defeats the purpose of having a smear campaign, or maybe they just didn't have access to all the people that I knew. Maybe their social circle was so different from mine that they just weren't able to make those connections. And it could be that they're just different types of narcissists where the smear campaign is not necessarily inevitable, but that's few and far between. But yeah, it could happen. So number two, I was trying to think of what to call this. And so I decided to call it the uh, roadkill response. Now, what I mean by that is simply this. You've been driving down the road probably late at night and you hear a bump or you see this thing running in front of your headlights. And before you can swerve, stop, whatever, there's the bump. And you know, 
yeah, you're not sure, but probably you ran over a squirrel, whatever. Uh, what happens when uh, what happens when you do that? Do you pull the car over, go back, and see how the squirrel's doing? Uh, I don't know anyone who does that. I'm sure there are some people who have just that much empathy. Now, what happens, I think, to most of us, yeah, we don't want to run over a squirrel. Uh, we'd have a little bit of empathy, but not so much that we're going to go back and, you know, pick the thing up and put it in our back seat and drive off to a uh, to a veterinarian in the middle of the night, which they're not open anyhow, but, you know, okay, man, I feel sorry, poor, poor little thing, it ran out in the road. Well, that's kind of what the narcissist does, with this one exception. There's no empathy. I mean, to you, the narcissist is just roadkill. They ran over you, and as far as they're concerned, it didn't matter. Uh, okay, maybe it does matter a little bit, and that they, they kind of enjoy it. Unlike you, they see something run in front of the road, and they may swerve, not to miss it, but to hit it. That's a narcissist. They get pleasure out of hurting people. They get pleasure out of hurting things. And to you, you may as well just be roadkill. Roadkill response. That is how much they care about you. Number three is this, what I call stealth stalking from afar. That is to say that they're no longer in your face. Maybe they're no longer connecting to you on social media, no longer sending you emails, no longer calling you, no contact of uh, any, any kind whatsoever, direct contact, but you know they're still paying attention because you got to admit they're bothered. You have bested them and nobody best a narcissist. Well, they do all the time, but the narcissist is not happy about it. So you don't best a narcissist without them getting upset about it. But they're not gonna they're not gonna contact you in, in this this form of response. What they are gonna do is keep track of you, but they're gonna do it so far back that you can't see them. There's there's no direct contact whatsoever. How do you know? How do you know they do this? Well, I mentioned this in other videos, but uh, a few years ago, I think it was probably uh, maybe ten years ago now that uh, I I had I had an accident where I fell off a ladder and had a brain injury, and you can still see the uh, indention on the side of my head when that happened. Uh, as a result of having brain surgery. And when, when it happened, guess who was delighted, excited, just flat out giddy about it? Because they heard that I was in a coma, that I was flown, uh, what do they call those things, airlift or whatever, to a hospital for emergency surgery in the middle of the night. Actually, I fell off the letter in the daytime, but it was nighttime before they got me up there. But um, the narcissist, yeah, just giddy about it, happy, excited. You know, checking out the obituaries, making sure, you know, man, maybe today will be the day. How do they know that? Well, obviously, they're in contact with somebody somehow, some way, and they would know it like like almost in real time. You know, it's not like the news took two or three days to get around and circulate, but these people, or in this case, this individual, knew about it immediately. So, yeah, they're tracking. They're paying attention. They got their uh, GPS, so to speak, attached to you. And they're hoping, because they can't hurt you, they finally figured that out. But they are hoping, praying that somehow, some way, that uh, you're going to be hurt. And that is one of the responses you get. Now, in my opinion, that, that's one of the better responses, because they are totally, completely out of your life. And by the way, if you see a little dot on my shirt, that's actually uh, sunlight, because it's in the evening, and I'm facing west, and there's a hole in the, uh, uh, in the blinds that's coming through. So, uh, you know. There they are, they're afar, they're paying attention, and they're hoping you get hurt. Another way they respond is what I call, well, it's not what I call, it's what, uh, it's kind of a clinical term because I've heard it from so many different sources, but it's called duper's delight. So the narcissist has duped you big time, and uh, you're very much aware of that. And you know that uh, now that he or she has really gotten uh, well, like we just mentioned a moment ago, they've gotten kind of a thrill out of the fact that they have ripped you off, that they have scammed you. But now they want to, uh, uh, how, do we, how do we say this? They want to do it in your face. They want to have this in your face celebration moment where they are showing you that, yeah, I screwed you over and I got away with it. Now what are you going to do about it? And usually, typically, that will manifest itself in a smirk. Maybe they will stir you down and smirk and say, what? 
what are you going to do about this? And I've mentioned this in a couple other videos, but I had a narcissist in my life, and he had this really weird thing. And I saw this uh, before I understood the guy was a narcissist, but I saw him do this to other people, that he would pace back and forth in front of them. He wanted them to see him. They wanted him, or they wa he wanted their victims after he discarded them. He wanted them to see him and enjoy the fact that he got away with it. Duper's delight. A lot of times, you know, you see serial killers like uh, Ted Bundy, and he wanted to uh, be his own attorney in court uh, when the, the, the relatives of his victims were in the court. Was that Duper's delight? I think maybe it was. I don't know for sure. I can't read the guy's mind, and he's been dead, man, what, 20-some years? I don't know how long. But um, he wanted to replay and get a little more a little more ego boost, a little more supply, just from talking about the people he had killed in front of their relatives. That very well could be a form of duper's delight. But the people who duped you, these narcissists who took advantage of you and seemingly got away with it, at least in their thinking, in their mind, they want to relive that. They want to go to you with that. Uh, they want to poke you with it and say, okay, now what? What, do you, what are you going to do about it? You know, I hurt you and I enjoyed it. And now I'm going to enjoy your response by seeing me and knowing that there is nothing you can do about it. At least that's what they think. The fact of the matter is there's a lot you can do about it. And that just shows you how shallow and short-sighted the narcissist really is. Duper's delight. All right, number five is this. This is something that I have noticed. I've not heard a lot. Of, well, I've not heard anybody talk about this before. But it's something that I call all is well hoovering. That is, they haven't broke off total contact, but they may send you an email, they may send you a text message, or they may bump into you accidentally and act like nothing ever happened. You know, hey, how you doing? How are things going? Um, a few years ago, man, almost 20 years ago now, I ran for political office and uh, got a message from uh, a narcissist, this guy that, uh, man, I, I almost took him to court because he, he stole so much. In fact, I would have sued him. But uh, it would have been pointless because even though the, the uh, attorney, rather, was confident, I'd win the case. I mean, it was so clear that this guy ripped me off. There's no question about it. But um, he was judgment-proof. He didn't have any resources. There was nothing I could get from him. So basically, I just waste money on court costs and attorney's fees, which would, uh, you know, just add to the damage already done. But, you know, after that was all done and gone, you know, here he comes. Hey, how you doing? Heard you're in for office. You know, just like nothing, like nothing ever happened. So that is what I call all is well hoovering, thinking that maybe, okay, we're going to smooth this thing over and we're going to go back to square one like nothing ever happened. Maybe, maybe, maybe. At that point, the narcissist would try to take advantage of me again. But let's not find out. All right. Let's just not respond to the guy. And that was my attitude at the time. And uh, I think that was the correct attitude. But unfortunately, hey, I didn't learn my lesson because there were other narcissists in my future, you know, at that point 20 years ago. And still, you know, I'd fall, fall for their scam because I'm naive and I'm gullible and I've got some character flaws. And those are two of them, being naive and gullible. Number six, another response that sometimes we will get from these people, these people being covert narcissists, is they will prod you by connecting to uh, close friends, or maybe family members. And they will reach out to them, usually through social media. I say usually, that's just based on my experience. They may have other ways of reaching out to your family or your friends. And they will contact them knowing that your dear, sweet, whatever, you know, brother, sister, mother, father, wife, husband, spouse, whatever it is, it's just too nice to cut them off. Just too nice to ignore them. And I say, look, you gotta ignore this person. Because, you know, they're a narcissist, but they won't do it. You know why they won't do it? Same reason I wouldn't do it. You know, when, when I knew that I had family members who were having a problem with this person, but, oh, man, they're just, you know, they're overreacting. This person, they just don't have, they don't have a filter. But other than that, they don't mean harm. Yeah, actually, they do. And I didn't know it until I had the point of reference, until I was in that position. So they will sometimes get to you indirectly. And the people they use as flying monkeys don't even know they're flying monkeys, don't even know they're winged monkeys, don't know they are narcissists by proxy. But they are. 
And you try to tell them, say, oh, no, I'm okay, we're fine. You know, I, I understand, I get it, I'm not a good person, but it's okay, we can still communicate. They don't understand what's going on, and there's nothing you can say or do to convince them until they themselves become the victim. At least that's been my experience. Number seven is this. If they get a barrier shock, you know, now when I talk about barrier shock, I mentioned this in another video, but I want you to, to imagine that you've built this barrier around you. Figuratively, figuratively speaking, speaking in terms of allegory. And this barrier that you build around you is nothing but electrified fence. That's it. So the narcissist comes along and says, ah, it's a wire. What's the big deal about that? Then they touch it and they get shocked. So this is sometimes a response that a narcissist will get if you have set up an electrical fence. That is if you made it really clear, look, narcissist, uh, whatever their name is, I'm done with you. Get out of my life. Go away. Disappear. But if you try to invade my space again, it's going to hurt. You're going to get shocked. People are going to find out who you really are. The truth is going to come out. Uh, I'm going to take your mask off. I'm going to show people that you're just an actor, that you are not the wonderful person, the charismatic individual that you pretend to be. I'm going to totally, absolutely, positively destroy all that. And of course, you're not literally saying this, but you're getting that thought across because if the narcissist messes with you, yeah, they get the message. That hurts. They touched your electrified fence. They get that barrier shock. Talked about that in some more detail in another video a couple days ago. Two rectangles on the screen. We put those there. So a lot of people, they just want to keep on the conversation. You know, they want to keep hanging out. Fine, let's do it. Uh, that's why I'm here. I've got dozens. Okay, I've got probably several hundred of videos. So we can talk as long as you want. All you got to do is click one of those two rectangles and the conversation goes on. But if not, thanks for stopping by and we will see you all next time.